Hey guys, thanks for joining me for my elimination video series. And some of you guys might be thinking, whoa, we could finally hear this guy's voice right now. <laughs> well, that's all thanks to this mic over here and Mr. Tyler DeWitt of YouTube. He, uh, he's a friend of mine who goes to MIT and he makes general chemistry videos on his channel and the link of which is right here. So you guys should definitely check it out. And I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about Tyler and this mic and some other updates and news in my second vlog or second vlog attempt but uh, yeah, so that's going to be coming out soon. If you guys want to get updated when I make that um, video, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. But anyway, back to my video series. So this video series is meant to be a continuation of my SN2 and SN1 video series. Okay. So if you guys haven't checked out that video series yet, you want to watch it first before watching this one, or else the next couple of minutes are going to be kind of like, whoa, what in the world is happening? Or what the heck is this guy talking about? Because I'm gonna be making a lot of references back to SN2 and SN1. So yeah, in order to avoid that, which is not fun, make sure you guys check out that video series first. And the link to that's right here, okay? So in this video, what I wanna first do is show you guys some key features of elimination reactions and what makes them different from S substitution reactions. All right, and then in part two and part three of my video series, I'm gonna be going over the mechanisms of E2 and E1, and then from there, I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth and show you guys some key differences between SN2, E2, SN1, and E1. And also, uh, there are some things that might not be fully explained in this first part because it's just meant to be an overview. So not everything's gonna make perfect sense, but don't worry, just like in my substitution video series, uh, I'm gonna be explaining everything much more in depth and detailed in my mechanism video. All right, so to start things off, first of all, why are you guys even watching my video, Ray? Why, are we even, why do we even have to learn about elimination reactions? Well, you guys probably should have already first learned about substitution reactions. And if you watched my previous video series, in a substitution reaction, you have a nice long and thin nucleophile that attacks or substitutes in to a carbon that's attached to a leaving group, which is usually a halide like chlorine. Well, then when it attacks, it kicks off the halide, and then your nucleophile gets substituted on, and then you can do other reactions and modify your molecule and turn into like a molecule like acetaminophen, which is like a painkiller, and another name of it is sort of like Tylenol, which I'm sure you guys should have heard of. But yeah, so that's, in that situation, we have, a, we have great characteristics that help us carry out a substitution reaction. Our carbon is nice and accessible because these bars here, Pretend, them, pretend, pretend like they are just um, hydrogens. They're really, really small. They're not really blocking your carbon. Your nucleophile could attack very, very easily. But now, if you take a look at my example over here, right? The carbon with the, with the leaving group, this one right here, it's tertiary and it's not as accessible as before because it's all blocked up by these carbons around it. And then if you take a look at the molecular form, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> So you have your leaving group chlorine uh, dash, so it's in the back, and then you have a CH3 in the front, I guess, I'll have it like this, so it's kind of facing you, and then all these other molecules around it with their own electron clouds here. So the problem with this is if you have a nucleophile that's just gonna try and attack or and try and access this carbon right here, it's gonna be very, very hard for it to actually get in there because uh, a nucleophile actually isn't this thin, and also there are actually electron clouds around each atom in my, in my model kit here. So the electron clouds are kind of act like a barrier and prevent the nuclear from, from actually getting to the uh, carbon. So SN2 could theoretically happen, but it's very, very rare. It's like one in like a thousand, one in, yeah, it's, it's, it's like a really, the number is really, really tiny. So you guys you are usually taught to not worry about SN2 reactions if you have a tertiary carbon in the first place because it's so blocked up. But yeah, anyways, uh, so yeah, that's basically one of the circumstances that uh, is very key for elimination reactions if you have a tertiary carbon. The second, uh, I guess, characteristic for elimination reactions is if, you're not, if your nucleophile is non-nucleophilic in the first place, meaning that it's not that good of an attacking molecule, it can't insert itself in, then you're gonna have a problem, right? You're not gonna be able to carry out your substitution reaction. And a, a really good example of a non-nucleophilic nucleophile is this one right here. This is tert butoxide. You guys should have seen this in class. It's a strong base. So because it's a strong base, it acts more like a base than a nucleophile. And how you can tell 
if something is a non-nucleophilic nucleophile is if it's chunky, like our terp-butoxide molecule over here. It has um, all these uh, CH3 groups over here that make it nice and uh, slow and unable to attack or substitute really quickly into a uh, carbon. It's hard to access it because all these carbon groups are slowing it down. Uh, and if it's slowing down, that's what hindered basically means. Uh, I'm just using chunky to simplify the word hindered, in case any of you guys were confused. But uh, yeah, so it's a strong base, it's chunky, it's hindered, it's, it's very hard for it to attack into this molecule over here. Let me show you this monster of a molecule again. So if this, imagine this is our terbutoxide. You're trying to get this to attack this carbon here. It's very, very hard, because do you, you see how crowded it is? And remember, there's actually, uh, you want to picture in your head electron clouds around all of these atoms here, including these carbons, all right? Picture these mushrooms all over this molecule. It's going to be so hard for you to attack into the molecule regardless, because there's so much clashing, and this carbon is just inaccessible. So in these situations where you have usually a tertiary carbon and uh, a non-nucleophilic nucleophile that usually acts like a base, you would have your elimination reaction.